Hello friends, this is Derek from TCI and today we're in downtown Honolulu looking to rescue another network. The network we're going to be working on today is located inside this black box. The company that owns it has recently doubled in size, so we're going to be running roughly 50 wires to this black box right here. So let's take a look inside and see what we're dealing with. The first thing that jumps out at me immediately as I look at the back of this is that you cannot close the rear of the cabinet because they've routed the power cord right through the hinge. Now scanning the interior of the cabinet, it looks pretty well organized. I don't think we'll have any trouble adding 50 wires here. That's just one panel. Most of this is unused space, so we're good there. I see a couple things I don't like on the outside from the front. One is the ceiling tile has a major crack in it, which is usually not a great sign of what's going on above it. And also, there's a jagged hole in the ceiling tile from which all the existing cables have been passed through. This is not something I ever like to do, so when we add our own cable pathways to this, we're going to have to work out a better way to do that. Now for the current contents of the rack, I'm looking at the patch panel, the cable manager, and the switch. Obviously, the patch cables are a disaster, but that's par for the course everywhere I go. The real thing about this cable manager that kind of bugs me is that there's literally nowhere to put any kind of slack. I'm just going to take this thing out. It's wasting space. Also, if I want to add 50 more cables here, I need to add an entire other panel and an entire other switch. So my plan is collapse all of this as small as possible and use very short patch cords to make this whole thing work. I'm also planning to reduce the 2U panels to 1U. So we're going to take the panels out because the keystones are removable. I'm going to put them in a replacement panel that's 1U and that should save us quite a bit of space. After I have a good idea of what I'm going to do with the network cabinet, I invite the boys down and they're going to bring cables, ladders, and tools. The end users have given us a diagram of where they would like all of their new CAT6 drops to be. Because of the company's expansion, they'll be taking over additional offices to their left and right on the same floor. What we're going to do is strategically lift tiles starting at the network cabinet and working our way towards the furthest outlets. We'll get a protective stingray up on the ceiling to protect the cables and the ceiling from damage during the pull. We'll install some string so that we can just pull the string next time instead of threading our way through the ceiling for every set of cables. And then with everything in place, we'll just start slinging cables one after the other until we've reached every single new office. The team is going to take care of running the wires from here on out. They don't really need me for that. So while I've got the time, let me talk to you a little bit about why I consider this a rescue versus, say, an expansion. Whenever you start your business or you work in a department where this is your job, I want you to take special care to keep in mind that the network is life. If you should be so fortunate as to expand one day and double in size as this company has, you'll want to be able to expand your network with relative ease. And the way the network cabinet is currently set up, that's impossible. It's a disaster. It's only as good as it needs to be for the current size that they are. And they didn't leave themselves any room to grow. Also, after I'm done fixing this, we're going to be looking forward into the future where maybe this company expands one more time. What if they need an entire another panel because of their amazing success? Will we be able to fit that into this cabinet or will we finally have to tear the whole thing down and start over? And if that's the case, how badly will that impact their business? Good network maintenance practice always has an eye towards the future for ads and changes. And that is really what the rescue here is about. We're gonna reformulate this cabinet so that in the future, if they need to add more, they have the space and ability to do so without downing their network. Okay. I'll step down off the soapbox about that because the team has finished running all 50 wires and they're right here hanging in front of the cabinet. We're going to be doing what I call finish work. That's the face plates, the connectors, the labels, the testing, all of that, and then tightening up all of the slack 
making sure we have service loops and the like. The first part I call roughing in and we follow it up with finish work. Now the most visually pleasing part of the finish work happens with this little tool right here. This is the cable comb. All you gotta do is thread all of your little lines into these honeycomb structures and then pull it down, which straightens out everything. And then you Velcro all of your cables nice and tight. I like to do them in groups of 24 so that they match a panel row. We're going to comb all of these out before they enter the cabinet. So the combing happens here at the stingray, and then the entire bundle as one solid piece will be threaded into the rack. Now the ceiling entry above the rack is still an issue. For now, we're just gonna cut holes in the ceiling and bring all of our cable bundles through right next to the existing bundle. But I do have a plan to fix this. For now though, so that we can begin termination on the panel, we're just gonna dig another hole right in that drop ceiling tile. The way that I plan to deal with this problem is with the help of my 3D printer. We're going to print out a little bit of a grommet that has a split right down the middle. With this, we can clasp around the bundle of cable and then secure the grommet over an existing hole in a wall. That way I can take care of that one that was here before I got here and the two that I've just made and everything looks a heck of a lot better. With all of that taken care of, it is now time to work directly on the panel. We start with the cables that we've added because I don't want to interrupt the network operations of the people that are here working right now. Our additions are unused at the moment, so it is a simple enough matter to terminate them onto the panel. You can see Kaysen moving everything into the 1U48 port panel. We rarely use these because they're very difficult to work with. Space is at a premium, giving you very few places to put your hands or cable slack in order to properly do the arrangement of these cables. As you know, working with a panel is a little bit of an art form. And if you don't have room to work, it can be really challenging. I think Kaysen would agree that this wasn't the most fun panel he's ever worked on. But the end result came out quite nice. Now, depending on how many people you've got with you, you might be able to double up your finish work. I consider the mounting of devices and the aiming of cameras on the ceiling to be part of the finish work phase. So some of the team is working on that, while the other half of the team is working on the panel. This way, we can get cameras installed, aimed, tested, online, and kind of just get that part sorted out so that this is all done at the same time. For us, everything comes to an end off hours on a Saturday. The end user has had to provide two new switches. Obviously, for 48 port panels, you're going to need 48 port switches to accommodate all of those cables. In addition, we've got to take their network down. And I ran into an issue where the existing keystones were not quite the same size as the keystones that we provided for the first panel. So for the second panel, I drew the short straw. It was up to me personally to cut every single one of those on a Saturday and re-terminate them. It didn't take very long, but I can tell you that on a 1U48 port, my fingers were awfully sore after forcing the keystones in. It wasn't the easiest thing. But with that out of the way, I was finally able to throw away all of these stupid patch cords that are ridiculously too long. I was able to switch over to these Ubiquiti branded short patch cables. I like these because the tab is easy to access and they have a stiffener in the neck of the jacket, which helps you bend it just a little bit and maintain its position. Switches go in and everything is checked, double checked and triple checked before we leave so that everything is A-OK -okay Monday morning. That's the end of this rescue. If they ask for a little bit more, we have now have space to do it in, and we have a solution in the ceiling to bring cables through without damaging the tiles any further. I'm going to wrap it up there and let the end users get back to work. I'm sure they're really happy with the outcome. If you have any suggestions on what you would have done differently, I'd love to hear them in the comments. And again, I really appreciate that you sat through that video and watched it. It means a lot to me. 
I'll see you again real soon in the next one. Happy network building.